This morning I'm beginning a new message series called Getting to Know God in the Psalms. The book of Psalms is located about halfway through the Bible. It's a large book containing 150 chapters or 150 individual psalms. It includes the longest chapter in the Bible. Psalm 119 has 176 verses. It also includes the shortest chapter in the Bible. Psalm 117 has only two verses. So the Old Testament book of Psalms is a collection of songs about common life experiences. It's poetry expressing the writer's heart toward God and toward life. Psalms is a book of life, a book of worship, and a book of relationships. It resembles a Christian hymn book or a collection of contemporary Christian music. So today I want us to begin our journey through the Psalms by talking about this subject, worshiping God in the Psalms. The primary subject in Psalms is worship. And worship is offering to God what's due to Him because of who He is and because of what He has done. The Hebrew word for worship means to bow down or to pay proper respect. It pictures an attitude of submission to someone who's superior. It's the realization that there is a God and I am not God. Psalms is a collection of Hebrew poems intended for use in both public and private worship. And each psalm reveals the heart expression of its writer who responds to God in light of his circumstances. So worship means inviting God into our circumstances. It means including God in our life. So the Psalms express the emotions we experience when we invite God into our life and circumstances. Each Psalm expresses the relationship between God and people. So how do we relate with God when life is good? How do we relate with God when life is tough and unfair? What do we say to God when everything is going our way? And what do we say to God when nothing is going our way? So today I want us to consider worshiping God in the Psalms by talking about the Bible's most familiar psalm. We're going to use that as our model, and that is Psalm 23. So today I want us to say Psalm 23 together. And we're going to put the words on the screen from the King James translation, since most people have learned it in that translation. So will you join me now in saying the 23rd Psalm together? The little girl had her shot at it. Now it's your shot at it as well. So let's begin with Psalm 23, 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As we begin our study in the Psalms, I want us to notice three things. Number one, the tradition of the Psalms. The title of this book in the Hebrew Bible means praise songs. It was translated into the Greek meaning songs to the accompaniment of stringed instruments. 
And later this title was reduced or made smaller into simply songs of praise without any reference to the stringed accompaniment. Now, the psalms are written by various people, and some psalms tell us who wrote it, and others give us no information about its writer. David writes at least 73 psalms, including Psalm 23. Asaph writes 12. The descendants of Korah are responsible for 10. Solomon writes one or two, and even Moses writes one. Historically, the Psalms cover a time period of about 1,000 years, beginning with the time of Moses in about 1400 B.C. until the Israelites return from exile in Babylon around 400 B.C. Now, the New Testament writers are quite familiar with the book of Psalms. They quote this book more frequently than any other book in the Old Testament. Someone has counted as many as 400 quotations from the Psalms, including both phrases and complete verses. Of the 150 Psalms, 35 are quoted in the New Testament. Psalm 23 is not quoted in the New Testament, but many suggest that it foreshadows Jesus' claim that he is the good shepherd in John chapter 10, verse 11. So the Psalms give us a window into how people related to God. And since people in the Old Testament face similar circumstances to experiences that we have today, it builds a bridge between the ancient world and the modern world world. The Psalms give clear evidence of people struggling with their faith, trying to trust God in hard times, and praising God for answers to prayer. And these expressions of both faith and doubt encourage us in our spiritual journey today. So number two, let's look at the type of Psalms. Not all psalms are the same. And at the same time, certain psalms have some common characteristics. A German Bible scholar named Hermann Gunkel uh, came up with this system of putting the psalms into certain categories or types. And his strategy was to study a particular psalm by looking at the form in which the writer composes it. He also takes into into account the writer's life situation that gives birth to the individual psalm. So based upon Gunkel's work and the thinking of others, I want to share five types of psalms that are found in the book of Psalms. First, there are lament psalms. And this is the most common type of psalm. More than one-third of the psalms are laments or complaints. Now, the major characteristic of a lament is its mood. The writer isn't happy or joyful. To the contrary, he's upset about something that has happened or something that has not happened. The enemy seems to be winning. Life isn't fair. God appears to be absent. David writes in Psalm 142, verses 1 and 2, I cry aloud to the Lord. I lift up my voice to the Lord for mercy. I pour out before Him my complaint. Before Him I tell my trouble. So most laments begin with a cry to God about a troubling situation. The psalmist lays out his complaint and why things should be different. Then the writer turns to God in faith to remedy the situation and to bring about justice. So the lament psalms often conclude with praise in the anticipation that God will come through 
and make things right. Have you ever complained to God in your prayers? Have you ever told God that something's not right and he should do something to fix it? Have you ever felt that God was absent in your darkest moments? Well, those feelings, those emotions are the content of a psalm of lament. Second, there are praise psalms. The praise psalms emphasize giving honor and glory to God. Now, the lament begins with the writer at a low point on the emotional spectrum. But with the praise psalms, the writer begins with joyful praise. This type of psalm expresses adoration for God based upon who he is and his generosity toward his people. God is adored as the creator of the universe, the provider and protector of his people, and the sovereign Lord of history. The psalmist invites others to join him in praising the Lord. Then the psalmist lists the reasons for the praise. Psalm 29, verses 1 and 2 states, Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Have you ever praised God for who he is and for what he has done? Do you give God glory when he answers your prayers? Or do you simply cross off that prayer from your list? Have you ever stopped and considered the greatness of God? Listing God's qualities and the greatness of who he is provides the content for a psalm of praise. Third, there are royal psalms. These psalms highlight either the reign of Israel's king or the heavenly king of the universe. And the psalms that talk about the earthly king at the same time look ultimately to the Messiah's coming to reign over all the earth. These royal psalms feature the anointed king of Israel and his many conquests over the foreign powers that threaten Israel's security. At the same time, it anticipates the reign of the Messiah who will govern with righteousness and justice. Psalm 72, verses 1 and 2 states, Endow the king with your justice, O God, the royal son with your righteousness. May he judge your people in righteousness, your afflicted ones, with justice. Words that affirm that God is the king and describe the earthly king reigning in righteousness and justice, those are the contents for a royal psalm. Do you look forward to the reign of Christ upon the earth? Do you look to him right now as the king of your life? Do you pray for God's kingdom to come and for his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven? Fourth, there are wisdom psalms. And this type of song, psalm provides instruction and practical guidance for accomplishing God's will. It includes practical direction for daily living in the pursuit of the correct Path. Wisdom Psalms help answer the question, how does God want me to live today? And most time that instruction will come from the law. In the Wisdom Psalms, the writer contrasts polar opposites to make his point. There is the way of life and the way of death. The way of the righteous in the way of the wicked. There are blessings and there is destruction. Psalm 112, verses 1 and 2 read, Praise the Lord. 
Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his commands. Their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wisdom Psalms list the benefits of following God's ways. Have you expressed to God the desire to follow his ways? Do you make it your goal to do the right thing? Do you look to the Bible as your guide for how to live every day? Fifth, there are thanksgiving psalms. In these psalms, the writer expresses his awareness of God's bountiful blessings. These words record gratitude to God for his wonderful mercy. They express joy to God because of his faithfulness, goodness, and protection. The psalmist stops to remember the good things that God has done for him. God has answered prayers and granted requests. God has delivered me, forgiven me, and protected me. The 23rd Psalm is a psalm of thanksgiving. It gives praise to God for his great deliverance from difficult and dangerous situations. Psalm 23, 4 says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Thanksgiving Psalms express words of gratitude to God for his merciful help and deliverance. Do you take time each day to thank God for his blessings? Do you express gratitude to God on a regular basis? Do you offer thanks for the many things that God has done for you in your life? Well, number three, the theme of the Psalms. The most prominent message in the book of Psalms involves a tension between two realities. Number one, God is good. And number two, life is difficult. When these two realities collide, it creates a lot of emotions. And it creates a lot of different responses. Some psalms praise God for who he is. The fact that he is good. God, you're my creator, my defender, my protector, my healer. You are awesome, God. You are holy. You are faithful. You have no rival. You have no equal. You are the Lord God of my life. Other psalms emphasize the difficulties of life. God, why are my neighbors so rich? And I am so poor. Why is the person across the street healthy and I have a disease? God, why are you blessing people who want nothing to do with you and not blessing those who love you? The book of Psalms remains popular today because each psalm is written out of a life experience with which we can identify. Almost every circumstance involving human life finds expression in one psalm or another. Some psalms speak of prosperity. Others speak of adversity. Some psalms deal with holiness. Others with sinfulness. Some look back to the past and some look forward to the future. The psalms give expression to the human soul. Emotions are raw, and the struggle is real. Psalms are known for their utmost honesty, freedom, and boldness. You'll find resentment at life's unfairness, protest at God's mysterious ways, frustration in his delay in helping, anger at his inactivity, and at the same time, joyous outburst of praise, gladness, and thanksgiving because of God's faithfulness. 
The Psalms record real expression from real people dealing with real life in relationship with a real God. And through all the ups and downs, the theme of Psalms comes down to this one thing, worship God. If we're feeling mad, we should worship God. If we're feeling glad, we should worship God. If we're feeling sad, we should worship God. Turn every situation into an occasion for worship. God becomes for us everything we need when we worship Him. So in the next five weeks, I'm going to give you an example of each type of psalm. And by the time we're done, you're going to understand all five types of psalms. And you're going to know that they're all about worship. And then at First Baptist Church, we're going to do something creative and innovative. The goal is for every one of you to write a psalm or two or three and email it to me or place it in a box that we're going to have at the back of Victory Hall. Then... I and my staff are going to take all of those psalms that you write and we're going to collect them and we're going to put them into a book or booklet. Then we're going to make that book or booklet available to everyone to read and to enjoy. So we are going to study the psalms. Yes. And we're going to write some psalms and we're going to share some psalms. We're going to learn from each other as we express our heart toward God. So for some of you, this may be easy. For some of you, this may be a little more difficult. But feel free to express your emotions to God and then write them down in a psalm. And as we go through these five types, one of these five types is going to hit home to you. And that's the type of psalm that you're going to write. And next week, I'm going to show you a little bit more of what that looks like and how to do that. The psalms are about worship. They're about being honest and bold and free with God and expressing to Him exactly what's going on. But at the end, we always turn to Him and worship Him. Because we know who He is, and because we know what He can do in our lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank You for this incredible collection in the Bible that we call the Book of Psalms. Father, may we learn some things about it. May what we learn cause us to grow in our relationship with You. And may the words that we read give expression to the words that we're going to write as we praise you, as we lament, as we find wisdom, and as we give thanks. Father, thank you for this incredible book. And may this experience over the next several weeks cause us to grow and find you in the book of Psalms. May the time that we spend in Psalms cause us to have a deeper, more honest, more open, and more bold relationship with you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.